guys. I went to Canada recently and flew with Porter Airlines. Flying can get pretty expensive and a lot of us are looking for a budget option. Porter is a budget airline and I thought I'd share my experience with you. The good and the bad. Let's start with the plane itself. A Bombardier Q400. It's a small plane and has about 74 seats. Aisle height is 6 feet 5 inches. So when you enter the plane, you might have to duck or you'll hit your head. Porter flies to several locations within Canada and to New York, Boston, Chicago, Washington DC, and Pittsburgh. It also offers seasonal flights to Connecticut. Connecticut? They don't go to Connecticut. They go to um, Vermont, South Carolina, and Florida. Billy Bishop Airport in Toronto is Porter's home base. The seats are fine when compared to other airlines. When you book online, you can pick your seat for $20. There are six premium seats that you can pick for $40. When you book your flight, you don't have to pick your seat. You can pick the seat for free 24 hours before departure when you check in online. As for baggage, you're allowed one carry-on bag and one personal article. The maximum weight for each is 20 pounds. And here are the measurements. With a US passport, you could do the online check-in, but with international passports, you might have to actually go to the counter. I did go to the counter to check in a bag, and the lines were really quick, it was very smooth, so check-in is pretty efficient. This is the small carry-on that I took on the flight, and it did fit in the overhead compartment. The overhead compartment is really small, so make sure you follow the uh, maximum measurements that Porter has given you, otherwise you will end up paying a lot extra. My friend took a bag that was slightly over the maximum measurements and she ended up paying $47.50 right when she boarded because the um, baggage would not fit in the overhead compartment. If you know you have a bag that's going to be checked in, just pay for that bag online when you book your flight. The cost is going to be $27.50. Now if you do that when you check in at the counter at the airport, it's going to be about $10 more and then if you forget and you or you exceed the measurements and you have to do it right when you board, it's going to be $47.50. For the next flight, my friend was smart enough to get a smaller carry-on. This is the um, American Tourister carry-on. It's designed to fit all these budget airlines overhead compartments. What I'm going to do is put up a separate review for this piece of luggage because it's really useful. So don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for that review. If you don't want to haul your carry-on onto the plane, right when you board the plane, you can leave it there. They'll take the bag for you and when you exit the plane, it'll be right on the bridge for you to pick up. I picked up my checked-in bag at baggage claim in Ottawa and it came out very quickly. As for the flight itself, I sat in the middle of the plane and smelled fuel during takeoff. That's probably the air conditioning system pulling in the exhaust fumes. If you're very sensitive to smell, I suggest you get a seat in the front or the rear of the plane. You might also hear some rattling and strange noises throughout the flight, but I didn't feel too much vibration um, during the flight. especially at Billy Bishop Airport because the runway is so short and the pilot has to break hard. I flew Porter six times and there were two hard landings. The Q in Q400 stands for quiet, 
but the constant whirring of the engines is not exactly quiet. And it's different from the high-pitched whining of jet engines. of us flew to Ottawa from Newark Airport and we landed in Toronto then took a connecting flight to Ottawa. On our return flight, the flight from Ottawa to Toronto was delayed. When we landed in Toronto, um, there was a porter guy at the airport who told us to wait and our next flight will be announced in some time because we were delayed. So we thought we had plenty of time, we were in the restroom and about a minute later while in the restroom we hear all of our names over the PA that it's final boarding that we pretty much have to get on the plane now. Um, there were a lot of people running out of the restroom at that point and uh, we did make it but um, customer service is generally great except for this one porter guy at um, Toronto Airport. While I'm on the subject of restrooms the fasten seatbelt sign was on pretty much the whole flight during all six flights that I took. And there were people who needed to go to the restroom, but they were not allowed to. So I would suggest to plan ahead. When I flew to Ottawa, I was offered a seat on an earlier flight for free since they were not full. So the next time I flew, um, I was flying from Newark to Toronto, I said, let me just get there early. Maybe I would get a um, earlier flight, which would save me some time. That was a big mistake because once I got to the airport early, I was told my flight was delayed already by a few hours. Um, there were two other flights before me, they were also delayed. In total, my flight was delayed for three hours, but the delay was not the worst part. There was an announcement made that all three of those evening flights would be rerouted to Pearson International instead of Billy Bishop, and that would have been fine. But a little while later, there was another announcement that the last flight, my flight, would be rerouted to Hamilton. Now, nobody really knows where Hamilton is, everybody was confused. Um, trying to figure out where this airport is. Um, it is 40 miles or 65 kilometers away from downtown Toronto. Porter did say there would be a free shuttle from Pearson or Hamilton to um, downtown Toronto. This is the in case of delay card that you get on the plane, describing the different airports that you may land in and transportation options. I ended up spending $100 in Uber because by the time I got to Hamilton, there was really no public transit to where I needed to go. So I ended up losing a lot of hours and a lot of money because the flight was delayed and it landed in a different airport which was really far away. The wonderful part about Porter is their price and their customer service. There were Porter lounges for all passengers at the airports I visited. There's free Wi-Fi, snacks, and newspapers. There's a machine for coffee, lattes, espressos, there's hot tea, really yummy butter cookies, bottled water, and sodas. In Ottawa, there were even IMAX. The first time I flew Porter, I wasn't expecting to get any snacks or drinks on the plane and I was surprised because they served snacks, sodas, juices, and even wine. Flight attendants were friendly, check-in is quick with short lines, and the security line was also pretty fast. Overall, Porter is a decent budget option. I've flown with them a few times, so I know what to expect. I hope this gave you enough information about flying with Porter. If you have any questions, you can leave it in the comments below, and I'll try to answer them. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. And the most important thing, don't forget your passport.